College football week 11 recap brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books down there. They got the Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Fitz Casino, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot. You can find more information on all six of them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more information on us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, YouTube, podcast, all that wonderful stuff. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. As always, whenever we do our picks, leave your picks in the in the bottom thing. Look, I'm just going to tell you, you go undefeated in your your picks, we're going to let you on the show. Like, I'm I'm totally cool with all that. We're going to do it. Right. <laughs> I hadn't talked to you about this, but no, we're doing that. That's okay. You pick seven games, you go undefeated, you're coming on the show with us. We're going to call you up. We're going to get you in. It'll be a good time. Let's go on and talk about it. First things first, we're doing this on Sunday morning. We sat down. We get everything ready to go. We're in the studio. Bobby Petrino gets fired. Bam. That's big for, you know, a couple of weeks left in the season. He's he's terminated immediately. Immediately, yeah. Not coaching finish. the rest of the season. Does that surprise you at all? I mean, the firing surprises doesn't surprise me. I thought he was going to be gone at the end of the year. It, it's kind of weird to do it now. Unless they think was that was the relationship like just that toxic maybe? Well, but considering the fact that he's got a lot of family members that that coach for him, we kind of talked about this off yeah. air. It's like one of the reasons are they all gone too? Because if so, then who the gonna, hell is left? Who's going to coach the team? And if not, it's kind of like when coaches leave right before yeah, bowl games. Why not and like just maybe him, it's just grad yeah, assistants coaching? Why not just let him finish? Uh, I, I don't I don't get that unless they think we really want to be competitive against the Kentucky game. And and we we want to try to not get embarrassed and or win one big game this year. Now, what would be and funny is if he could do that. If they make Brian Van Gorder the interim coach, but and surely he goes he's got to be and, it though, right? And he's he goes out and it. wins against yeah. Kentucky, like <laughs> and there's like an uprising. We want to keep Van Gorder. I don't know that there's an <laughs> offensive coach that you can put on there the way they've looked, and considering that fact that Bobby controlled the offense so much. Uh, surely, surely Van Gorner, like not that he's great or not that I think anything special of him, but he's got to be it. I mean, you would think um, because you don't want like I mean nobody there. You don't want Petrino's son or his brother-in-law or whoever the hell else is that. Like yeah. you don't want one of his family members coaching the team because they they might. I mean, I wouldn't think they would, but they might tank on purpose. Yeah. Like, I, man, I don't know. Like, I'm, that's a weird situation. I'm going to continue. To fade them. This does not change any of my betting habits at all. Oh, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, you think uh, you think Brom takes the job? I, I think they ought to be able to get him a little bit cheaper now that he's like five and five. Ooh, I don't know that. I don't know that. If he's happy and he's five and five, there's a big difference between happy and five and five. And well, his no, no, no. His so this is his dream job. Like it's his alma mater. Like he has come out. He has openly said. That Louisville is where he wants to be the head coach. Okay, well then if they, if, he, I mean, if he said that in the past, then it was just whether or not they could actually afford it to fire Petrino and yeah. hire him. I like Jeff Brom a lot. I, He's making I think three point two million a year at Purdue. Is trying to take on Clemson easier than getting through the the Big Ten the West? Big Ten West. See, I think you can win the Big Ten West. I think you're not worried it easier. Well, but I mean, you're still at Purdue, so obviously the you're standard, at a you're yeah. at a logistical disadvantage anyway. Um, it, the standard of winning at Purdue, it's got to be a lot lower than the standard of winning at at Louisville. Yeah, I mean, like he could go seven and five every year at Purdue, and I think they'd be happy. Oh, I think they'd be ecstatic. At Louisville, like you, win a bowl you better game, win, win a bowl nine. game every other year. Like yeah. at, at Louisville, you better win. Like at, at Purdue, I think you could make a bowl game every like two, like every every three years. I think Brahms a good enough coach where I don't see a year going by that he couldn't get six wins and make a bowl game. I think they might have and trouble if, this and year. And if ever they're a bad team, they, they, they got to play five Indiana. Wins, they're going to get the academic like bump to get the bowl game. Let's right? uh, let, let's let's look at what Purdue has left this year because they're five and five. I mean, I know the the loss against uh, Minnesota this past week was bad. That was we'll, we'll get that, that was real real we'll, bad. We'll get to that, but um, let's see. So Purdue has. Uh, so they just lost to Minnesota, forty-one to ten. I yep. mean, just got that was bad. That was demolished. bad. Demolished, no doubt. Um, and they've got Wisconsin and at Indiana. It is possible they could lose both of those games. Uh, yeah, it's possible, but I it's mean, they, possible they could win both those games. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely I mean, could. So, I mean, who knows? We'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but it, another part of this could be like if 
if Louisville had already called Brom yesterday before the game, Ooh. did that kind of throw him off of his game a little bit? Yeah. I, so that's, that's a little dirty pool. And, yeah, that could just be Tom Herman at the end of the year, what he did yeah. when he was at Houston. It was just like, all right, I got this gig. I'm out. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. I'm out. Like, I, it doesn't matter if I win any of these. It's who cares? That's disappointing if that's what happened. I'm not going to be happy with that. No, I, I'm with you, but I, it is entirely possible that it happens. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's talk about this. The one that we were going to start with, Bedlam. Oklahoma 48, Oklahoma State 47. Uh, I put this solely on the kicker missing the extra point. Well, and he missed a field goal. And missed a field goal, yeah. But if he hits that first extra hits, point, yeah. then all they have to do is kick an extra point to win. That's and it. Well, not necessarily win. There was still like a minute something left in the game. But Correct. Regardless, uh Ohio, Ohio, Oklahoma, 702 total yards. Oklahoma State, 640 total yards. That is 1,342 yards of total offense. Big 12 football. No defense whatsoever. Uh, you know who my favorite player from this game was? Okay, who? Just No, no, no. I just want you to guess. I, well, I, I don't. I, I really have no idea. Chuba Hubbard. Okay. That is one of the all-time greatest because, names. Because of the name. Yes. Okay. Well, that and, and, I was he, like, well, and the he was way, tough. The way you said it, it's obviously not going to be like Murray. Like, or, I didn't I didn't see know. what happened with, like, Justice Hill as why he was not in the ballgame. Chuba Hubbard got 22 carries, 104 yards, three touchdowns, five receptions for 49 yards. Justice Hill had five carries. So, I didn't see what happened. I didn't even look it up. Yeah. I All I know is that Chuba Hubbard came in. And, and with one of the over. all-time yeah, he, great names ever. Played well. Played great. Played really well. Not not just yeah. Not so, just well. Pretty unbelievable game. I didn't like the two point conversion play call. I like going for it there. We've talked about that. Yeah, I'm a the, fan of that the all the time. The play call was was good if you have like an all time great quarterback because you, that is a really difficult throw to make. Well, and you've only got one option. You only have one receiver there to get well, open. It, so it's thing. pretty easy to cover that guy. The, but no, it, but he wasn't even covered. Like that receiver was no, he open. was open. You're right. He they was threw open. It. And yeah. he will always and forever be open. The issue is just a bad it's a it, hard throw. It is a very difficult throw because you gotta throw it way to the outside. That's right. And it, look, it, Taylor Cornelius had a good game. I mean, he had over 500 yards total off, or uh, not total, uh, passing yards. Can, but like, can can I can I ask you a question? At what point in time are we going to s- just stop defending Oklahoma, barely beating mediocre teams? Uh, it'll it'll never happen with because, the national media because because you go to overtime against Army, and, and Army's pretty good this year, but but they're still Army. Yeah, it's so still you go Army. To, like so you go to o, OT against Army. You're a two-point conversion away from losing to a five-loss Oklahoma team. Oklahoma State team. Oklahoma State team. And, and you – You it, beat Texas Tech by five with a third-string yeah, quarterback. Yeah, you go, you go all the way down to the brink with Texas Tech, a five-loss team, yeah, with their third-string quarterback. Like, at what like, point I, in time are you still great? I think like so. Why, they, why they do played, we continue to give here, them credit? They played really, really well early in the season, right? Yep. And then as they continued to slaughter teams, they started to kind of just come back to earth. What and and obviously like they fired Mike Stoops. Uh, that defense the hadn't game. gotten better since firing Mike Stoops. No, no. But I, anybody I, can score on them with any type of offense. I think like obviously Oklahoma is one of those teams where you put all of your talent on the offensive side of the football. Correct. And they go, all right, well, we're in the Big 12, so we're just going to try and outscore everybody. And, and their offense is unbelievable. Yes. What happens when they play a defense that can just get one or two stops throughout the whole game? It's it's why I'm curious. Like they, Everybody talks about how, like, for Alabama, like Oklahoma is one of, like, two or three teams that would be able to beat Alabama. Complete horse crap. And I think that's crap. It's just horse crap because Bama is going to make you punt 50% of those, those, yeah. those drives. And, and, and Bama's going to hold score the football. Every drive. Well, that defense not, not is that. garbage. Bama will not punt. Not not just that, but like Alabama understand and, and other teams, Georgia could do this. Like I think Auburn could do this. Like Oh, just they hold will, the ball and they run. will hold the football yeah. and run, and maybe not Auburn this year. Auburn kind of sucks running the football this year. <laughs> but But they, not against Oklahoma, maybe. But maybe not against Oklahoma. Maybe they suck because they play against Alabama and L S U and Georgia, and that's really hard teams to run against. I mean you're you're but Oklahoma's yeah. not hard to run against. Hell, anybody could do it. Now, you're right about that. You this, are so This right. is my argument for why I have UCF higher than these Big 12 teams 
because all they do is score, score, score. Well, UCF just scores, score, scores, and they haven't been beaten. Yeah. And and I'm not saying UCF would beat all of these teams. I'm telling you this. Those teams aren't mark- marketably better than UCF because they play the exact same style of football. Yeah. We're just going to score. We're going to blow up the scoreboard, and if we get the ball last, we're probably going to win. Yeah. And and they've looked out and gotten the ball last like twenty two times. Feels right. like <laughs> I don't know. Moving on, where your next point is? I wanted to let us get through the Petrino news. Let us talk about Bedlam because that was an amazing game. I gotta I gotta tell you, you you owe Brian Harrison an apology. Brian Harrison, yeah. who is Brian Harrison? The coach that you hate from Boise State. Harson. Harson. Brian Harson. Uh, yeah. No, I've got. I've got that on. Uh, it was number seven on my you, list. You, you owe him uh, an apology. No, no, I'm not apologizing for that. <laughs> I, I I know people at Boise State that were like openly rooting. Obviously, they want Boise State to win, but the reason they want Boise State to win is so that maybe some Power Five job will be dumb enough to hire Harson. Well, nobody's away. gonna do that. That's exactly what I'm saying because he is a mediocre coach. Look, here's the deal. They came out and played the game of their lives in that second half. Fresno was up 17 to 3. Like I'm just they gave up three straight touchdowns. And their offense turned garbage. I think, I think at some point garbage. they went into they went into the halftime and they made adjustments. Uh, That's what coaches are supposed to do, right? Th- this was They're not supposed to go make adjustments. Th- this was not adjustments. This was Fresno State didn't make adjustments. They went out I will, and said, I will We're do this. the exact same thing we've been doing and they got the Boise caught. kids played tough they they dominated the line of scrimmage on if, both sides of the ball. If they beat Utah State. And I will give them props for this win. Now, I will tell you this. This sets up a really, really interesting next two weeks because we got Fresno State against uh, San Diego State. State. That's going to be a um, great game, I which think. Which San Diego State, by the way, lost last night yeah. to UNLV. I don't think it's going to be a great game. I mean, yeah. it might have been a look-ahead spot. Yeah. You know, let down look-ahead, obviously. Um, but it, it's still, like, it'll still be for, you know, the, the conference championship game. Um so you got that next week, and then the, the week last after, week, Utah when, State. when there are four billion gigantic games going on, all these rivalry games, tossed right in the middle of that is going to be Utah State and Boise. At Boise, on the Smurf turf. Boise, Boise I mean, did well with the scheduling this year. They, they got those two big boys at home. Yeah, and it is not easy to go into Boise and take a W. No, you, you got that right because it's, I mean. It's still a great place to watch a football it's game. It's still really, really cold. I know. I and know. they got some rabid fans up there, man. They Utah are... State will handle the cold better than Fresno, obviously. Uh, yeah. Yeah, very much so. Now, I wonder if maybe that was a little bit – because once Fresno went up 17-3, to three, it's like they just disappeared. Just disappeared. I think the coaches and boys who went into the but locker did, room did you watch some, that whole game? Adjustments. I'm, I watched a lot of it. Did you watch the very, very end of the game – when there was like 15 seconds left. Oh, I know, I know. Okay, I didn't so get that late. 15 seconds left, and Boise has gotten the ball back after another fourth down try that Fresno couldn't, you know, convert. Yeah. Once I realized the game was over, I was. They, I was kinda... ESPN was showing, and they, I'm telling you, there was this much space between where the ball was and the first down chain, and they called a first down for Boise. And not, the, it, and it would not have mattered. It wouldn't have made any difference in the world. But they called a first down. For Boise, which in turn ended the game. Yeah, just trying to get the game over. They would have they would have gotten the first down. The next I just play I anyway. could not understand it to save my life. Yeah, they're like just I, trying to end the game. I mean, that, look, we've watched the referee uh, umpires in baseball do the same thing. Like this is a blowout. Everything's a strike. Like we're just getting this thing <laughs> over. Like if, like if you're down by six in the seventh inning, literally every pitch the the, the opposing pitcher throws is a strike. We're just getting this thing over. We're just getting it done. Bam, bam, bam. Out. Stats are going up. I'm getting the hell out of here. All right, so off of Boise, Fresno, Clemson 27, Boston College 7. Uh, it was more like – we'll start off with this. Anthony Brown in the hospital. Did you see Steve Adagio's press conference after? Yeah, I did. That was the most heartbreaking. Um, and and I like, love Adagio. He's he's one of my favorite coaches in college football. This was football. his moment to shine. Yeah. They had been waiting on a game like this in Chestnut Hill. To come to Boston. For like, for like right. 30 years. Yeah. You know, it, basically since uh, – uh, since like the Doug Flutie Notre Dame thing, right? Yeah, and, and you're and you're talking about an offense that is so based on precision. 
you can't just throw another quarterback in there and say run this. Well, it's yeah, because it's like just a, not, it's just not. It's all about precision and time. Their entire game plan went out the window. Well, yeah, yeah. Like there's it, nothing to do I, offensively. I, I guarantee you this: they would have had much more than nine yards rushing. Oh yeah, had Anthony oh, Brown stayed in that ball no game, no doubt. Um, and and obviously, like they had way more. They had a play where they lost like. 40-something <laughs> yards. No, it was first and 10, and they snapped the ball over and the And then it was like second head. and 43. 42, yeah. yeah you 42. Can't, I mean, you, there's nothing you can do with that. And that's after they got a couple of first downs. Like, yeah. they made a couple of plays, and they're putting together a little bit of a drive here, and then you snap it over the guy's head. What, it wasn't even like a bad snap. I just think the quarterback wasn't ready. Well, And then it just rolls it, like, it, because it, it's it, cold, yeah. and like the ground is hard, and that's the way it goes. Um and Boston College did hold Clemson to 129 rushing yards. Defensively, they showed and, – and I don't know that Boston College is – and I don't mean to cut you off there. No, no, you're but, good. But, but Clemson had been putting up 50, 70 points against all these just garbage teams, and I kept screaming, that doesn't matter. These teams are awful, and you can name your number against them if you want to. They're yeah. putting up style points, and everybody's buying in. They played a decent defense, not a great defense, not a top 25 defense in the country, a, a okay defense, and they held them to nothing when Boston College, that defense is on the field all night because they, the offense can't get any drives going. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell like the the weather was affecting Trevor Lawrence. If you think like, this ball, this Clemson, all these people, oh, Clemson's one of the teams that can hang with Bama, you just get over yourself. Get over yourself. You know what I thought during the ball game? I thought, like maybe, maybe Dabo and that coaching staff started to feel a little bad for Boston College. Like, no, and I know that you can't do that, no, but like, you, can't you, do you that know that Dabo football. is like an emotional guy and whatnot. And he, and you kind of, it's like we could name our number here, but man, they lost their starting quarterback because one of our three hundred fifteen pound, you know, big yeah. Wallies like landed on him. And, and now he's, he's in the hospital. No, and he's not just hurt, but like, yeah, it's it's he, not a it's not a broken it's an, leg it's situation. An internal yeah. organ deal, yeah. and and no, they don't know what's up. But I wonder the, how much info the, does Dabo have at that? Like, he no, he probably doesn't. He know doesn't that. know. He All he knows know is that the quarterback that. is out. Yeah, like for the game. I, yeah, he knows I don't. That. Yeah, I don't, but that's all he knows. I, I, you know, I don't know that you. I'm not giving him any any kind of sympathy credit situation there. I think they got stopped by a defense that was on the field all night long. Yeah. And they bend but didn't break, and they held them the best they could. I, this Clemson team is good, but it's just all the people putting them up there with Bama, the difference between Clemson, Notre Dame, and Michigan, and Georgia is nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And I, if you make Clemson a touchdown favorite over those three teams, I would take all three of those teams right now, no question. That's – that's big talk. No, oh, there's just no doubt. No doubt. Because all three I mean, of I, those teams' defenses, way better than Boston College's defense. I, I could – okay, I'll tell you this. Uh, I think that any of those teams could beat Clemson, and I also think Clemson could beat any of those teams. Oh, I'm, I like, completely agree with that. I think they are all very, very equal. And, of course, yes. you like taking the dogs anyway. So, But that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's him. But that's my argument here. I think they're all equal, and everyone's saying that Clemson and Bama have separated themselves from everybody else because Clemson put 70 on Louisville. Yeah, it's like, who cares? Like, I'm, there's no doubt that I know 22 people that are in my cell phone right now that I could call and maybe put an offense together to put 40 on Louisville. <laughs> I mean, I'm not one of them, obviously. I've got some pretty well, no, you just play friends. offensive line. No, I'm going to stand on the sidelines <laughs> with a head, headset on. There you go. But, but like, like, that's <laughs> – that like I think I could devise an offense to put up thirty against against Louisville, like like congratulations. Yeah, but when no, you right. play a team that you should beat up, where their defense is on the field for like eighty snaps, and you can't score more than twenty. Yeah, I mean it's and and I think weather had something to do with it, um, but yeah, I mean that was. I'm not. I'm not making excuses for him. If you're, if it was, you want it was to be the a, number two team in the country, you don't get excuses like, "Well, it was cold." It was a fun game to watch for like a quarter and a half. Well, and once, it was just kind of once, yeah. Once, once you get to halftime and you realize like he ain't coming back, and holy crap! And Adazio like, is one of the all-time best coaches in college football not like best in quality but like to listen to to talk to. I mean, he's I, I he's can watch Gundy, him on repeat when like, he does that thing where he's uh. He's like, what's better than this? Yeah. No. Dudes being dudes. He's so good. <laughs> uh, the the Yahoo um, college football 
uh, a podcast, Pete Thamel sat down with him and they talk and like all he wanted to do was talk about Italian food at the North End. Like like Pete Thamel was trying to talk football and he just wants to talk like ah, I go here sometimes on Thursdays before big games and I get a you know the meatballs and it's just he's such a great guy to listen to. Yeah. And I think he's a really good coach. I like him a lot. I'm biased and partial. That's fine. Part of the Urban Meyer tree. Yeah. Speaking of Urban Meyer, Ohio State 26, Michigan State 6. Uh, Got a good win. Big win. Yeah, big win. Ohio yeah. State scored 17 in the yeah. fourth quarter. Uh, scored the last 19 of the game. They were up 7-6. to six. And I felt good at 7-6. to six. And then, you watched this game, right? I watched okay. a, a little it, bit. It, okay, so it, did you see the intentional safety? No, I had to be on a different channel for Okay, that. it was 7-6. Yeah. to six I don't even know. I don't even remember them talking about it. Ohio after. State's special teams was lights at their punter down the ball like like five times inside the five. Now he's pretty good. It was just remarkable to watch this kid. And at one of those instances, Michigan State runs three plays. They are still on their own one-yard line. Ohio State, you can tell, is lining up for a block. And this is still in the third quarter, so it's still 7-6. And Michigan State at this point, like, they had been trapped inside their own five, like, three straight possessions or something like that. And rather than allow Ohio State a chance at a blocked punt, they snapped the ball over the punter's head intentionally to make it 9-6 to six so that they could come back. And Now, I'm assuming this is what they did. I mean, they, they hadn't talked about it. And get but, a free kick. Get a free kick and flip field position. That's right, huh? Like they they were trusting their defense. I, I the issue with the free this. kick was they kicked the ball out of bounds. Yeah, you can do that, and which flipped the field position right back. That's right. And then from there, it was just over. Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't ever seen that. I kind of like the strategy though. I mean, if you got, I mean, flip. it makes sense so long as everything else goes exactly right. But I still think you have to make them block the punt, like. Get your team together. Well, tell them not, no. It's not a. It's not a make them block the punt. Even if you get the punt off and it's just a crappy and, punt, yeah, you're still gonna get. They're gonna get the ball to yeah. 35 or whatever. So, so I get. I get. I kind of understand. Like, do the we situation. give up two points or do we give up seven points? Yeah, that's it. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not opposed to that. That strategy. Mm. Here's here's the thing I like. Ohio State went out and they beat up a team that that we think is pretty good. Yeah. The the one thing I don't like is all these Ohio State guys beating their chest. Now I, I get. I beat them up a lot. But they're all beating their chest talking about how, like, whoop, everyone says we can't play defense, and look what we just did. We played great defense against maybe the worst offense you're going to play all year. Yeah. Like, like Lewerke did not look good, but like, he's not looked good in a lot of games When teams shut LSU down, like, okay, like, shut down a good offense. Well, and and, and another part of this. Shut down a bad offense and then beat your chest that you shut somebody down. D'Antonio is, is going back and forth between Rocky Lombardi and Brian Lewerke, and I don't get it. Like, when you do that, like the two quarterback system, like I rarely see that work. No, I don't. I think this. I think Michigan State. I think they know this is obviously not the year they're going to play. They've already got too many losses. They're they're not really playing for much. They're going to let their defense control the game. And offensively, I think he's just trying to figure out who they are. And if in one of these games, one of these guys takes over. Then he can make a decision. When and and but if he has just started to take over, right? Like he and it's not he didn't score a touchdown or anything like that. They they got they had a touchdown taken off the board, yep. uh, which turned into a field goal. So like rather than being up ten seven, they were down seven six, and like it, it, everything seemed to be going pretty well midway through the third quarter. Correct. And then just the the, wheels fall off. Everything fell apart. Let, oh let me my ask God! You, so. Is this the biggest win for Ohio State all year, or is Penn State the biggest win? Because I'm trying to Penn figure State. out what their best win is. And Penn State's going to win out. So at Penn State, yeah, Penn State's going to win out. They're going to okay. finish with their losses. You know that that would have to because be this it. is not a great Penn State team, and this Michigan State team actually beat Penn State. So at, and then I mean there was there was at State College there was TCU. Yeah, but um, that's not a good win. Now I mean TCU is a dog team, man. At, but that's it, but that's what I'm saying. Like it, they've got. A they team, don't have any other good TCU, wins. They get no. It's, everything else is just kind of eh. no. You know, it's so whatever. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the SEC. Uh, two big games: Bama twenty-four, Mississippi State zero, Georgia twenty-seven, Auburn ten. Uh, let's talk about the Georgia one first. Okay. 
Georgia and and we don't have to talk about anything other like Georgia can run the football. Correct. They have they've figured out their offensive line problems and they are they're running the ball. Swift looks fantastic. Uh, now that he's you know done with the groin injury, he looks like the Heisman Trophy candidate he was supposed to be. Right. What did you think about Georgia's fake field goal up twenty seven to ten with just over three minutes left? I, I didn't understand it. I didn't know the reason for it other than just Kirby just wanting well, to Kirby, run Kirby it up Kirby said, on. wait, like, here, look, if we kick a field goal, we're still only up by 20. That's yeah. still, like, that's less than three touchdowns and three extra points. Like, if we score the touchdown there, then it's a four-possession game. And But I'm like, okay, but all you were going to do is kick an extra point, so even then it's still three touchdowns and three two-point conversions. Yeah, it so does, like. It doesn't, I, I get it. Regardless, I'm okay you're going to – but are they really going to be able to score three touchdowns in my, three minutes? My thought process is this. If you're going to do that because the math tells you you want to get this to a four-possession game, my my argument is then, then – why or make them make two three extra point – or three two-point conversions, sorry. Then my argument is run a play. But – but why why fake a field keep, goal? Keep that fake field goal in your pocket. You might need that. Yeah. Like why show that to Bama or to some you know? Unless you're wanting to show, like unless you're wanting to put that out there, like because obviously like teams will do this just to give something for the other team to have to prep for, right? Yeah, but that's dumb because so Bama preps for it. That means you still can't run it because now Bama's prepared for it. I yeah. would rather not show it and know that they're going to be. When you play Alabama, they're going to have they're, – they're going to be more prepared than anybody else in the country. So making them take an, an hour out of their day to, to watch for this just means you can't run this because they're going to be ready for it and yeah. they're going to stop it when you need to. Yeah. No, you're I, that's, right about that. That's my thought process. You're, you're, you handily have this game. I'm not showing out. I'm literally – as soon as this game's up by two scores, I'm as vanilla as I can be running the football knowing I can get first downs, drive, and still score every possession with our kicker and our offensive line and the running backs, and I'm showing them nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. All right, let's move over to Bama. Uh, so Alabama, yes, offensive, or defensively shut down Mississippi State. Mississippi State shuts down Alabama's offense, holds them to less than 300 yards total offense. Uh, Tua goes out with a quad injury. And you know his his sprained knee is still a problem. Uh, I think same the, leg, right? Same leg. Yeah, yeah. It's a, that's oof. what's tough. That's what's it's, tough. Um, the biggest thing that came out of this was the the same crap narrative of the referees. You can trying say to it's help. a crap narrative, but the Gary the videotape doesn't lie. No, I will say this: there were missed calls. Like there were bad missed calls. Like I could not believe. How fortunate Alabama was with the the shutdown the the shutout should not be something Alabama's bragging about because that is openly agreed. taken away from. Agreed. Um, I mean it's still on the scoreboard, so but obviously that, but it's still but there. You, but you get but you get what I'm. But that's not I do something get what you can saying. brag about. I, I do get what you're saying. I, no, I, I, no Alabama fan or player or whatever should be bragging about holding this state team to zero, especially after yeah after taking two touchdowns off the board, right? Yes. Um. Now, the the fumble in the first, like on the first drive, correct? I hold that more on Mississippi State coaches. No, you can't do that because this isn't the NFL. They don't get challenges. Yes, they do. No, no, they don't. And then when you call the timeout, if it's found to be your favor and it still flips, it's not the NFL. You don't get that timeout back. Yes, you, you get the challenge lose. back. Yes, you do. That's what the rule is. You get the challenge back. You can use it one more time in the first half. You you shouldn't have to waste it, man. You know you that was a pretty easy call. So so here's my problem. I I haven't done this research, okay? I I've literally there and he is a Mississippi State guy, but but there is a um, a, a, a Mississippi State sports guy. He used to do SEC country before SEC okay. country got shut down, and uh, and whatnot. And is he, it Matt Wyatt? Yeah, that's okay. it. I was about to say I yeah. can't. I don't remember his last name, but but he like did some digging or whatnot. The guy that did the phantom like blocking the back call or whatever. 
is an Alabama grad. I saw that. I saw that. And, and his dad played at Alabama under Bear Bryant. How that, are they allowed? We have 400 million people in America. Hold on, hold on. How hold can on. we not come I, up with six people? That's, that's not, that, that is, it's not accurate. It's, all all it's, the stuff that Wyatt is talking about is not accurate because there is a rule in the SEC referees rule book. I know that. They I, will not allow I, somebody, somebody to, to ref. referee their own yeah. games. They shouldn't like, be allowed to ref in the conference if they went to any school in the conference because it's not possible for you to be unbiased. What if he's referring a Tennessee game or an Auburn game oh, and, that, and I, you I know that they know where hate he, those teams? I don't know where he went to school. I don't that, like. But, I don't know just, where he went I'm to school, but I know about the rule. The rule is a bad rule because it just says you can't ref this team, this game, your team's game. But all of these teams in this conference are connected by hatred. I I agree with you on that. So that so so it's a bad like if you went to school in the SEC, it's you can't ref reason, in the SEC. It's another reason why referees should one they should be paid more, and oh, two no. they, they should, should be full time. And but I yes, think college your refs should are be taken full-time. into. No, the NFL is the one that's not. No, college refs are the same as the NFL. That's then that's like, dumb. I, but I mean, that's the way it goes. It's a there's seasonal enough game. money. We're we're literally putting waterfalls and putting greens in in these locker rooms for players to play in. We have enough money to pay people a livable salary to do a pretty damn difficult job. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree. It, the issue is that uh, that everybody wants to keep that money. But that's right? but that's, like the referees are NCAA hired people in the NCAA. While they do make a ton of money, they do not make what the leagues make or what the conferences you just, you make. Just, you just tax the schools and you take it and from them. That's what I would do. You just absolutely say, look, we're we're drawing a line. If you're building six hundred million dollar facilities, I'm going to need about five million dollars so we can pay all these damn referees. Yeah, because we literally have forty schools that have billion dollar facilities. Yes, we can't come up with enough money to pay. A hundred referees, full time employees, salaries. Let's move off of that one. Let's talk about another salary. Cal fifteen, USC fourteen. If you stayed up for Pac twelve after dark, you were awarded. You got to see a really fun football game, even though it was only twenty nine oh, point no, score. Low scoring, that's fine. It's still a good game. USC is now five and five. Yep. They play a uh, an improving UCLA team, and then Notre Dame to close out. If they go five and seven, do they replace Clay Hilton? Yeah, I I think they replace him anyway. I mean, Lynn Swan said like it doesn't matter what happens this year. Like we're gonna let him, we're gonna let him do his thing. Well, okay, maybe but, because they think oh we lost a you know we turned over a bunch of talent. I don't know, but lost but I mean, look, say James Franklin puts out there, eh, I might be interested in coming to L.A. I definitely think it's James de- Franklin an upgrade. Oh no, I I think he's an upgrade. I think he is too. I think he's a really good coach. Okay, I let's let's be, be honest let's here. let's be real. Yeah. I yeah, I don't think they're on the same playing field. Um, I think this is where being an athletic director is kind of a complicated thing, and you have to have trust in um, agents, which is kind of a hard thing to do, but. Well, the way it's the way the game is shaped today, like it, it's the only way to get business done. If you can have backdoor conversations and find out who's actually interested in your job, and you find out a Franklin would would be interested, then yeah, you make the move. I'd be doing that, but if, right now. But if you're if you don't know that information, your program is not in a great spot to just say, well. But I don't know, man. I mean, surely you would think even if Franklin didn't take it, what if you say, hey, Brom. You sure Louisville is your dream job? Like, like I've yeah. been to Louisville, okay? And I've been to L.A., and they're not the same. Or Campbell at, at Iowa State. Like, all of these guys are way better or, head coaches. Or Kyle Whittingham at Utah. Like, I understand he's, like, yes. you know, in his late 50s, but. No, I'm not, see, but I'm not afraid of an he's older He's a, he's a hard-nosed coach. coach. I mean, Bill Clark is one of my favorite coaches in college and football. And what is he, like 50? Yeah, he's 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 mid-50s, probably. No, I think he's, I think he's 49 or 50. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's right there. I, I'm, uh, I'm which means he's still got the good, like, yeah. 15, 20 years I'm, left. You don't have to You don't have to be. I mean, And you very get, rarely is anybody going to stay at a school for longer than, like, 10, 15 years right. anyway. So, like, like yes, if you could get Lincoln Riley, it'd be great because he's, like, 24. But Lincoln Riley on. ain't coming out to L.A. But I'm just saying, you but, know, but yeah, I, I, you get what I I'm saying. I understand you don't the have to just go get the 20 year old. Yeah, I understand the premise. Um, all right, let's move off of that. I've got three games that, for the most part, locked up divisions. Okay. P 
Pitt 52, Virginia Tech 22. Bam. Northwestern 14, Iowa 10. Our boys. UAB 26, Southern Miss 23 in overtime. Uh, Pitt pretty much locked up the ACC Coastal. Uh, they have to win at least one of their last two and hope that uh, – well, no, at, at that no. point they just I they think they, I think they get it if they win yeah, one of the two. Yeah, it's locked up if they win one of the two. Yep. Because um, they own most of the tiebreakers, right? They own all the tiebreakers, yeah, basically. That's it. <laughs> like, they've only got one loss in conference. That's it. Um, would it be fun to watch this Pitt running game against Clemson? I'm going to tell you this. I, this they like, had 495 like I said, yards Clem- rushing. Clemson is probably going to beat them, and they might beat them handily, but they are not the monster we think they are. Now, Pitt has improved drastically. Like, drastically. Who would you say first four weeks of the season? More improved right now. Temple or Pitt? I'd roll with... I'm not saying who's better. Oh, man. Who's more improved? Because remember, Temple lost to Villanova. I didn't know Villanova had a football team. Yeah, but Pitt was like... Pitt was getting trounced. And, and they, they were, were, get, they and were they getting were embarrassed. by like good teams. But they were getting like, embarrassed by... Yeah, pretty good teams. It was teams. like 51 to 13 to... Or no, 51 to 6, I think, by Penn State. Like 42 to 17 by UCF. Like, they were getting humiliated. And then, like, they, they flipped a switch after yeah. that UCF game. That's it. And they've, um, they've been so much better. Like, they, uh, they're running the way, game. It, like, Narduzzi, big, I knew, would figure something big out. Big win but. for UCF on the, on the, on the conference. We're going to talk about big wins. I mean, that's a pretty damn good win. What, against Navy? <laughs> no, against Pitt. Oh, against Pitt. Yeah, and yeah, no, no. against I, Pitt. Dude, I've been talking about this for two weeks now. Like, yeah. if Pitt wins the Coastal, that helps out UCF in the playoff race. Like what so long as they, other chaos What if they ensues? beat Clemson? Can you put UCF in there? They beat a conference champion. And they ah. beat the hell out of that conference well, they, champion, Yeah, they, too. they beat the hell out of a Power 5 conference, conference champion. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, yeah. what what does that do to people? Uh, I mean, at that point, like, UCF has all the ammunition that they need. Well, let's say Cincinnati wins out other than that. And let's say, you know... Temple and all these other teams like continue to just win in the in the AAC gets the, like the three only, or four teams and we talked about how the top 25 just ain't great what no. if the AAC, AAC gets like three or four teams in the AAC and they've got wins over all of them and then they'll have a win over a power five conference champion now the, I'll tell you this I mean I know hurts, we're, this is a lot of what ifs what hurts UCF is Bam. that the the AAC West is very mediocre right now like Houston, but they still played a bunch of those other teams in the East. It, yes, they did. Like, but South Florida losing again. Yeah, like that's three straight losses. Not good. That's it. So, but they if, were all three straight losses in conference. I, agreed. And that just shows understand. the conference is pretty good. Yeah, but you understand how that works. Like, if everybody's beating everybody, everybody's going to say, "Ah, it's a down year." No, like, which is crap. I understand. That's garbage. But that's garbage. You can't do that. What helps them is Cincinnati next week will probably be a top twenty-five team. Yeah, so they should that be. will give them a I, win over a team that was. They absolutely at the time should the be a top twenty-five team. Yeah, I mean they're nine and one. Like absolutely. Um, anyway, so yeah, so I, all right, uh, we, Northwestern, Northwestern fourteen, Iowa ten. Man, love this. Place. What has happened to Iowa? I don't know. They've lost three straight now, and and they have lost games like so. 30 to 24 at Penn State, totally reasonable. That, that that's normal. 36 that's... to 38 at Purdue, and this is the same Purdue team that just went and only could put up 10 points on Minnesota. I, I, that, um and you, I understand you, like Purdue is I, you I get might that. be right on on Brom have gotten the call. Yeah. That might be a, that made no sense. You might be it might be a fade Purdue the rest of the year kind of thing. Yeah. I, I really think that's I think that's what might have happened. Um I don't know, but Northwestern man like it like they're going to Indy. This this team is so frustrating to watch. I I watch every minute of most all of their games. They drive me insane. I have lost almost every bet all year on them. When I bet on them, they they, didn't they, lose they, they drop. When when I bet against them, they 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 win. They win big. This week I bet on them. Got money line on them. Loved every bit of it. I, yeah, what happened to Iowa's offense? Is it, well, it, can Northwestern's like, defense just clamp somebody down like that? I think they can when they want to. I mean, they've shown that. Man, it's crazy, right? It, it's Pat just, Fitzgerald is a good good coach. Yeah, he's a good coach. He, he just drives, plays to the level of his competition. He drives me insane. Uh, UAB twenty six, Southern Miss twenty three. UAB 
is playing in the CUSA Conference Championship game uh, against either Middle Tennessee State or somebody, which it the, could be. I, they play Middle Tennessee State in the regular season. In, a, in the last game in of the last year. In the last game of the season, yeah. Yeah, and they, they could play them in back-to-back weeks. Um, big, or big against twelve situation. Type or thing. against, uh, uh, they've already beaten Louisiana Te- uh, Who else is? I don't know I don't who know else who is. is in in that conference. They, uh, that's, so th- that's good. That would be up there. Well, North Texas is pretty good, but then North Texas went and got beat by Old no, Dominion. They've got, they've got a couple of losses, but that's not a conference loss, is it? Yeah, I mean it's a it it's a yeah. I didn't know where Old they're Dominion both in the was. conference USA. I didn't know where Old Dominion was. That's uh, being honest. Let's see. Well, they're they're in Virginia for one. Well, I know they where are they the co- are. <laughs> I didn't know they were in conference <laughs> USA. I didn't know what the hell. Conference uh, Middle they were Tennessee in. State is six and one in conference. Um, Florida International is five and one, and they've got two games left. Middle Tennessee State plays Kentucky this weekend, and and they close out with UAB. Maybe. So if Florida International loses to either, da, 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 well, no, Florida International owns the tiebreaker of Middle Tennessee State. So uh, FIU plays at Charlotte and Marshall to end the season. So more they likely win, it will if be they FIU. Win one of those games, they'll they'll play UAB. It'll be FIU and UAB, and okay. the game it appears is going to be in uh, UAB. Yeah, at Birmingham. So, that's, I mean. Look I'm going to tell you this, man. Look at Legion was, Field. If it's a slow week, I might drive over to UAB and watch that game. That could Well, it won't be a slow week. It's conference championship week. I know that, but I, <laughs> oh, I, yeah, I, I might still do it anyway. It's not like I can't watch TV on all the Depends rest of Depends on games. if you and I go to Indy. Oh, no, if we go to Indy. That's a whole different ball game. That's different. So unless the game is on like a Friday, yeah, like you don't think that's on a Friday, right? It might it might be a, one of those conversations. Hey, let's not hey, we compete figure with this the, out. Let's right not now. compete with the rest of the guys. Um, I mean, it's possible because like the uh, the Pac twelve championship is, you know, uh, uh, is on Friday night. That's it. Yeah, the Pac twelve is definitely on Friday night. It's not with the rest of them. Let's see. Conference USA championship game is scheduled for. What if it's a Thursday night? I doubt it. That would be smart, though. You're going to get a bunch of eyes. You own the country. Yeah, but at that point, like... Wouldn't that be great, though? You own the country? You get all the eyes? Everybody's watching you? It will be Saturday, December 1st ah, at 1230 p.m. Central Time, televised for the first time by the league's longtime broadcast partner, CBS Sports Network. There you go. So, uh, the end of the game will be going on while Alabama Georgia is on, and nobody will watch. Yeah. So, I'd still, what it is. I'd still go. Let's see. Uh, move on from that. Tennessee 24, Kentucky 7. Football is a very emotional game, especially for kids that are uh, somewhat talented, not like kids that can play above their heads like Kentucky has done all year. When you had two emotional games back-to-back, and then you go play somebody that you are about a touchdown favorite over who has played basically like crap all year, and everybody is – Pushing you up. Oh, New Year's Six Bowl. With that loss, does that move Kentucky out of a New Year's Six Bowl? Oh, yeah. No, I I think so. I think so. I mean, let's say they beat Middle Tennessee State and Louisville to end the year. They finish 9-3. and We've seen what the rest of the top 25 looks like. I think they could still finish top 15. Oh, no, I, I don't disagree with that. But I think because of the New Year's Six Bowls and bowl affiliations, I just don't think they're going to get in. I think if they if they brought like if they want fans to show up, yeah, hundred percent they would bring Kentucky in because those fans would absolutely show up for a game. But if you're talking about, hang on now, how many SEC teams do you think we're getting in? So let's say Georgia doesn't get into the playoff, so you got Georgia going to go to a New Year's Six Bowl, and then you got LSU. LSU is going to go into a New Year's Six Bowl. I, the only I, other know, one is Kentucky. Well, that's it. No, you're probably right, but are are they going to let more than than two? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I could see it. So Big Ten got three in last year, but they didn't have a playoff team. But then, I don't think we've ever had more than three. They didn't have a playoff team. I don't think we've ever had more than three. But I don't know that we should. Maybe I mean, not. it's a bowl game just because it's a New Year's Six Bowl and it's considered bigger than the others. None of them matter. Uh, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, let's talk about Big 12 madness. Okay. Iowa State, Baylor, ejections. Iowa State won this from 28 to 14. And David Montgomery got kicked out of the game. They they he threw rightful, down. He rightfully should have gotten kicked out of the game. Well, and and the other guy obviously rightly should have gotten kicked out too. 
I'm one. I'm one to punish the team that starts this stuff because once it starts, well, the the guy from Baylor predict. is the one that like started throwing punches. Like, did that, you see that, that kid? No, it doesn't matter. The, the guy when, jumps over the referee. I get it to punch at, Hang at Montgomery. But that's this is my problem. In once it all starts, all hell breaks loose, and you can't really control what 18, 19 year old kids are going to do. But when you put your knee on somebody's throat and you have your hand on the other two kid's face mask, yeah. holding them to the ground, anything that happens after that is because of this trigger. Yes. And therefore, this is the guy that gets punished most harsh. And everything else, not appropriate, but excusable. We understand yeah. you're not going to do that to my teammate. And I don't care if there's a ref there or not. All right. The reason this is a big deal, Texas 41, Texas Tech 34. Iowa State's got a big game coming up. Big, big game. So, is David Montgomery going to sit out like this game or the first half of this game, or does he is he suspended at all? If like, you're, if you're gonna, what happens? if you're going to be a disciplinarian and run a a good, clean program, yeah, he should miss the whole damn game. If you're trying to to win the Big Twelve, because you beat Texas and West Virginia wins, you go to the Big Twelve championship. Yeah. So, I mean, I I get trying to win. But but your kid made a mistake, and he made a big mistake that was selfish and can cost his team. Yeah, I mean it's a, it was it was a humongous deal, yeah. and with Texas winning last night, that just made it even that much bigger. Uh, let's talk about uh, here the last two because we have gone long today. Right. We appreciate you guys sticking around with us for this whole thing. Uh, Wake Forest twenty seven, NC State twenty three from Boom. Thursday night. Chris hits a plus eight thirty five money line. Woo! And NC State is the garbage team that we thought they were. I, I almost hit two, plus eight. Because because if Bedlam goes my way, yeah, twenty point spreads, twenty point spreads. Bet the dog have the stones to put some money on the money line. I, I needed that two point conversion. It'd have been the most <laughs> profitable weekend I've had in a long time. Um, white quarterback Jamie Newman, twenty two out of thirty three, two hundred ninety seven yards, three touchdowns. Against uh, a backup quarterback that's never taken a snap. Yeah, that's this is what NC, NC State, State is like. Congratulations, you've only got three and, losses. And everybody talked You're about a NC garbage State garbage team. Everybody talked about NC State making a New Year's Six game. That's, I, and I don't think that's just happening. A garbage either. team. You've beat up on nobodies. Finally, my worst beat of the week: LSU twenty four, Arkansas seventeen. LSU's up twenty four to three going into the fourth quarter. They give up one touchdown. Yeah, they're still covering. Yeah. This right. is all garbage time stuff. Still covering when they're up twenty four to ten. Correct. They give up another touchdown. Yep. Now they're not covering. Now they're not covering. And they drive the ball down the field. Yep. And Nick Brissett has a touchdown run with about a minute left. Wide open and he and he, and he goes down. He, he slides. goes down. And and I can understand that. It is the right football move. But but it is the right football move if, if you're gonna kneel it well, afterwards. Yes. And and instead they ran two more plays. so uh, And they I, go down on purpose the second play. No, no, no. Hold well, on. The first play. No, the first, the first play, again, wide open for a touchdown, and he goes down at the one-yard line. He slides at the one-yard line. And then the coaches are telling him, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Like, score. Yeah. So they run another play. And they get stopped that and play. And they get stopped that play. And then, and then they then, kneel it. And then they kneel it. Yeah. So, so Clay Travis brought up an interesting thing here. He okay. said, "He said it's pretty obvious what happened here. Coach O had LSU minus thirteen and a half. Nick Brissett had Arkansas plus thirteen and a half. So every time they gave it to Brissett, he would go down. <laughs> I I wonder I wonder how much O is caught because he has very much made it clear I'm the CEO." I'm 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 hands off of micromanaging this. I want to know how much is that Imziger? How much of that is the running backs coach? Like obviously there is miscommunication somewhere. The right play is to take the kneel and and kneel the game and and kill it. But the right play is. I don't like running the play. I said this the other day when when well, the, the um, it right happened. Play it happened in the score. NFL. Like it's, no, it's at, it's at that no, point, go on and score because no it's, no, it's not. Well, no, because when he did it, Arkansas still had a timeout. Arkansas still had all three timeouts. No, 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 no. When when he did, they only had one timeout. When, so 
go on and score, go up by two touchdowns, and that way it doesn't but matter. But if you but if you kneel it, it doesn't matter either. Like the game is over, all the touch all the timeouts in the world don't matter. I couldn't figure out what like they the were. math works in the sense of you just kneel it. I don't once again, we, we gave Todd Gurley credit, you know, a couple of weeks ago, everybody else did, and I crapped on him because <laughs> because he didn't go down. He was tackled. Like he, he didn't make a smart move by going down. He was tackled. You don't run a play because what happens if that that second run where he could have easily walked in and he gets tackled and he, as soon as he gets hit he slides or whatnot? What if the ball pops out? Like what if they get it they run it back? Like now we got a tie game we're going to overtime. Yeah. Like what what are we doing if you're the smart play is to kill the clock kneel the game ball game is over as soon as they got the first down it's ball game Arkansas mathematically cannot win if you just kneel it. I know all the gamblers wanted it. I had them. I won and I lost money on that. But it's just one of those things where it you you I don't know why they're running plays and I don't know where the miscommunication is. And I don't know like, is that Imziger's call, is it O's call? Like who's calling to run a play? I mean it's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. And here's the thing. We'll we'll never know because nobody's gonna ever say like well, this guy the, called it or whatever. The amount of crap on Twitter about we need a federal investigation into point shaving on on Nick Brissett. It I will tell you this. It does. I will I will tell you this though. Now that gambling is more of a thing, I mean it. Like you, you it's one to be talked about. Yeah, because it like because the obviously, the girly play did the same thing in the NFL. It would have pushed the over. It hit every teaser, and it yeah. would have covered a couple of lines based on where you got the spread. So like, were you doing that because you had money on the game, yeah. or your it's, buddy had money? Did somebody tell you go down? I mean, what what like, happened? What what? And obviously, I don't think there's any communication going on on the no. sideline. But I think at that point, it's like, hey, if you get a chance, like these conversations, and people who say well, I don't think that happens, look, I am. It happened. It happened in Memphis years ago. Yeah, I am actually closely related to that was, people. That was basketball, right? Yes. Yeah. That that were bringing shoe boxes of cash to assistant coaches to point shave at Memphis and did federal time for it. Like yeah. I this is it this stuff happened. Now, I don't I don't think it happened. I don't think it happened in the girly thing. No, this this was probably just miscommunication. Yeah. One guy's telling a guy one thing, probably. one guy's telling a guy another. Probably is the caveat there. Whew. What a wild week. What a wild week. We went 52 minutes on this. It was a good week of football. It was a really good week. It was a really good week. All right, this is one of our longer videos. That's all right. If y'all hung around for all this, appreciate we appreciate it. you. Hit that subscribe button for us. We do this every week. It's not always this long, but uh, you get the point. Um, go down to Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Look, you can watch and wager on any of the games down there at any of their six sports books. Fantastic stuff. TunicaTravel.com is your place to get more information. And, as always, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Hit subscribe on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. You can follow us on social media, Twitter, uh, Facebook. We'll be back later on this week. We'll be back. Uh, no, no, no. We got playoff predictions one night. Go, go check out the other videos. We got a whole bunch more coming up. Mm, I don't know how to do the video thing. How to do the video thing? How, like, is it going to see the tape? The, the hour -long?